And we're back for the deciding game number three. Will be my final cast, as well as Connell Guy's final one of the day. But we have two more best of threes after this, which Zayori and Marlini will be taking you through. But for now, Dakota, big stakes. Hellraisers, they force this deciding game three. The winner moves on to the winner bracket finals. They punch their ticket to China in doing so. Guarantee themselves prize money, a fully paid trip, and, well... A lot of happiness. <laughs> it's got to feel good to make yeah. it there and at least have a shot. And it would definitely feel good for either of these teams. Whoever is to come out on top in the back of this one, they've been working so freaking hard today, especially Empire. They already had to battle through a huge best of three series earlier and now going to game three here. So six games back to back that they've had to muscle their way through and... Well, we'll have to see. This is a big one. Last game was a hell of a game. For this one, we'll see how it goes. Opening up the draft, it's going to be a Ventral Spirit pickup to lead things in for Hellraiser's Empire. Dire they got the puck, and they got their precious Doom this go-around. And for the first time today, LD, we're going to get to see a Razor. All right. The Razor. It's been a while. I want to point out Brewmaster was ignored as well. I think that's important. We've seen oh, yeah. Brew snapped up very early. Remaining. It had great results in one game, not so great in the other. I think showing a brew another time would be a little bit predictable. So, Reserve Razor, time. I wouldn't say he's a Doom counter, but he's one of the carries that generally does better against Doom. You get Doom, your static leak still persists, it does not disable your Eye of the Storm, Five and he tends remaining. to build tanky, so he's he can survive against the Doom longer. Team I, it's still Doom, but if anyone's going to be able to deal with him, it's a hero like a Razor. So I like that pick, and also someone who can lane quite effectively against him and, and punish the offlane Doom, if that's indeed the way that Empire <sighs> decide to run it. Oh, respect ban on that Drow once back. more. Going to be coming out from Empire, as Hellraisers have also getting rid of that AA here. So just kind of developing out the early parts of this draft. <sighs> we'll have to see. So... Raise for Benful Spirit. I don't know. You're dire seconds, side, remaining. so Hellraisers could look to synergize even more with that tremendous amount of Five minus armor seconds, they build remaining. on. They played that bristle in the previous game. It could be something they fall back on once more to tack on top of it. And now there's a gyrocopter ban. I guess fearsome of silence gyro once more. This is a this is a bit methodical draft happening right here. They don't want to be running into any of the usual. But hey, Chen hasn't been banned yet. I still want that Chen LD. I want to see it. Or Enigma. Yeah, I do find the... Team it's Empire's this to interesting pick. battle going on between the teams in this series where you see the second phase, two games in a row now. Hellraisers, they ban the Ancient Apparition. Empire immediately bans the Drow. Hellraisers would love to push, and Empire simply will not give them some of their favorite heroes. Now, the one that's still out there that we have touched on, which we're not seeing right now, is the Enigma. Mm-hmm. As far Fair. as the team fight presence against Ten Puck Doom, you're going to have a very remaining. tough time getting off a of black hole, but Enigma still is a very strong pusher, can also Five help secure Roche early. Remaining. Other big heroes that have been important in this series, there's a Bristleback Reserve lurking time. afoot. Mm -hmm. I wonder if Empire consider even snagging it for themselves. We haven't seen any Invoker in this series either. That's one of Resolution's signature heroes, and I think it's something they could turn to, potentially. Void's out there. That was a fifth ban last game, so I don't know. Just a few of the heroes that are kind of in circulation right now that the teams may be thinking well, about. No, I agree with you. And, uh, Glu Glu uh, who could forget the, the Aloha uh, Dance Rubik? <laughs> might as well grab it while he can. He continues to impress with it, so I'm not really surprised. It seems to just kind of find its way into whatever lineup you want to build for, so regardless of what they got on the other side, they feel confident enough that with at least him leading off their support duo, They'll have a nice, strong start. And they love to do that kind of beachy gaming roam around style here. So they tack on top of this Rubik someone else who could add on you know, with it. They previously, remaining. what, had the Ogre? Ogre still in the pool and available if they want to go down that road once Five more. But mm. there's going to be the Dazzle now coming Team out from the side of Hellraiser. So All right. maybe I, part of the reason why they wanted to ban out that AA is just to have that little bit of extra healing power here. Incoming Bristleback for Hellraisers. Certainly feels like that could be the case. Now, the Doom can shut it down. We, we saw that earlier today, but you got to get the eggs and the blink, and that takes a while. So, Yeah, it's a lot of farm time you need to invest to make sure. But There's also the X factor uh, of the axe if you want to counter the Dazzle with a little choppy chop. But axe does not so really much, match yeah. up that great against Razor. So. Also, Venge pretty Five good against axe. He, he jumps on someone, you just swap them out. 
I don't know. Empire seems like one of those teams like, if we want to play an X, we're going to play an X. Yeah. We don't really care how it matches up. Yeah. Well, I don't, we'll just play what we want. We feel comfortable. and It's more like the, both teams feel the same way. They're just so headstrong about what they want to do. It's just, we'll just we'll ban out what we know you're good with, and we're just going to play our game. And that's what it is. But We'll see here, following through Team Empire, so they have their formidable potential offlane grab with Doom. Puck could be also an offlane or potential mid laner there. And secondary support's probably what's to come. We've seen Disruptor even picked up a couple of times. I don't see how Silence could really attribute too much of this one. We saw it picked up going against something like an Ember or a Brew, but Brew's been ignored altogether. And Well, same with the Ember, so it's not really necessary in this kind of one, so... We'll have to see. Sand King is uh, something that I would love to see. Gap closing capabilities could be... Yeah, I think they could afford to be a bit greedy. It's not like Dazzle is going to really roam around too much early. So if they want to kind of pick up something that can jungle up a bit, I don't think it would be too much of a problem here for Empire. But we'll see. It's They're, they're soaking the clock though, man. Down to now about 20 seconds left with no more reserve time. Yeah, this is an important pick for them. This You already have a sense of where they want to take this and... They they really lay their cards on the table with the next pick. We won't Ten see any more Tiny Wisp from Empire. Now. That was first phase banned on the Wisp. Five I'm trying to think any other X Factors out there. Lycan is still in the pool Daya for Empire can... if they want to go that route. They have room for one more core. There's a Void out there if Hellraisers are thinking about it. Though, I think it's a tough Void game against Doom and Rubik. Hmm. The nice thing is that Empire, they, they go back and get this Ogre again. So they have their Ogre Rubik duo. It, it didn't work out for them last game, uh, at least the game overall, but you know, it's still a great remaining. support duo. And of the game so far, between him, Rubik, Dazzle, and Ventually, he's the remaining. best at being able to be you know, big big and bad and bodyguard out the runes, which could be I very, very crucial. Ooh, this I was fresh. thinking it for a while. I'm like, man, we haven't seen Nature's Prophet today. Yesterday, what was it? Navi pulled out. A global strat, which invited, which was like, what nature's prophet, specter, and uh, that was one other one, uh, Zeus. But uh, it didn't end up working out too well for him. But we hadn't seen nature's prophet yet today. And, uh, I certainly welcome this Five fresh face here. A little I, bit of split push power. Why not? They're gonna ban the wraith king. I feel like at this Dyer point, there's down. two very distinct paths they can take. One is the offlane prophet and play more of a like a hard carry in the safe lane you have razor profit plus one so you have three heroes that can scale with farm assuming they pick something for the safe lane like that and you, then you're not so it worried about getting out meaning. just you know gg'd by the double doom late game but Five the other option remaining. is to go aggressive try lane give the profit either mid or safe lane put razor in the other and uh. and just look to run over their safe lane which is Team gonna feature Empire's a rubik he's a little bit stronger now in the early levels but He's still not the strongest laning support. So that's where Banning Wraith King, a hero that can go aggressive, and also a hero that matches up really well against Doom, to the extent that there is one, he's the Doom counter, makes a lot of sense. So I like that Wraith King ban by Empire. I still think Hellraisers might be considering aggro try, though. We don't really see it very often, Ten but... Seconds they go back for the Medusa. There it is. Medusa. Going to be the ace, the final pickup right here for Team Empire. They had ran Medusa before. They're actually currently 2-0 and oh with hmm. Medusa and 6.83. Normally you see the Medusa, you want Mana Burn. That's Anti-Mage, Invoker. Nyx, Nyx can work, but it's... How are you going to... I mean, is it support Nyx of farming Venge? I don't, I don't think, I don't think Nyx really fits. Fortunately, they do have Nature's Ten Prophet, who could get a remaining. Necro book. I guess that helps a little bit. Yeah. They decide feel, to kind, of, like kind of a build up. But it cost Wax cool. Invoker could work, but it's a, it's not going to do much late game. They'll go for the Lycan. So Team heavier on the, the push, very good at taking Roche. Empire now have three heroes that are potential Doom targets and great defensive supports, Venge and Dazzle. So it's not going to be the same kind of game as, as the last time Empire ran Doom, where once he got to that mid-late game stage, he just ran them over. That's much more potential here for HR to beat the Doom late. And they're already going to TP right. this Prophet bottom just to drop a ward. Prepare for <laughs> he did that, what, in game number one? The same thing. He goes right over here and plants the ward right here. I'm going to I'm gonna wait... Right here. Oh, he's but, he throwing you a curveball. Right. Yeah, it's the curse. 
Normally the curse affects the players, not the casters. <laughs> but uh, he doesn't even have a ward. Now the curse is. Oh no, he dropped it. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 uh it's going down the home stretch, buddy. Have that last sip of coffee. Let's, let's get focused. All, All right. right. All right. Deciding game five, Dakota. Let's do it, buddy. Off lane, game we've five. got <laughs> we've got the Yoki Doom for Empire. Resolution going mid on the puck. It will be a defensive trialing for Silent. So on his traditional one position now, I long glassed on the Dusa. Aloha Dance, the playmaker last time. This time on the Rubik again. And always want to fly, already tucking himself into the side shop as your ogre. Magi making a return. Meanwhile, on the side of HR, we've got Goddamn playing the Dazzle. Dread, the Vengeful Spirit. Affininge going to be playing the Razor. Gorek heading bottom as the Nature's Prophet. And that leaves Arts taking up that safe lane as the Light. Are you still with me? The I, I kind of. You seem to be cutting out. I'm not sure if you're going silent or if it was just lagging out a bit. So, uh, am I, that am might I, be, I don't know. It was a bit of an awkward thing there with Mumble. I wasn't sure if you were pausing for a thought or if my end was just lagging. I didn't want to interrupt if you were still doing okay. your fancy yeah. introductions there. Oh, this is going to be very sad. I, I think Gorak's about to be unhappy. Oh, man. Look at them. Weighing it about. Ogre scratching his belly. Eager and hungry for a potential grab here. And Gorak, it's... Not like your puck, where you could still potentially get on out. He's going to move on forward thinking like, okay, so, reasonable setup here, but he wants to wait and see what's happening in the other lane. So, there are people missing. At least that would be the casual smart thing to do here. Are they going to have enough to lock him down? Oh, they're, they're ready to poke their little heads out. They're He's about to get the vision, it. and he just skates away. Good reactions oh. there by Gorak. Yeah, nice timid play there. He must have been keeping an eye out to see exactly where everyone is, and they spring the trap, and he's ready to go, so... That can, that can be really devastating, because if you die there, then the Rubik or the Ogre gets boots, and you don't have your own boots, and they could just keep on doing it to you. Whereas now, he just has to stay alive, get the boots out, and, and then they'll have a tough time getting that jump on him. So, surprising. So that if, not just the first blood, but it's also about the future kills that it can lead to. So mm -hmm. Well done by him. Comparing the off lanes, it's going to be the off lane doom for Yoki. Up against a, let's see, Venge, Dazzle, Lycan, Trilane. Ooh, we'll have to pause. Doom should get some uh, some stuff off this lane. Especially when Hal's on cooldown. Then they, they don't have too much harass. Yeah, I think Doom would be alright. He'll he'll probably get harassed and bullied back a bit. He does only have two Tangos, though, already. So he's going to be dipping into the regen bank pretty quick and... Her vengeful spirits is going to make sure he, she could be the bouncer of this lane and force him to stay back. As far as the mid lane matchup, though, Puck going against the Razor here. Who do you got? Razor should I, be able to find his way and get the CS and try to bully back Resolution, but Resolution also has that null. So it's a Puck Razor with Hal as well, but Resolution is just wrecking him right now. Six, he does have the superior base damage, the Puck, and it's tough to get a good. Oh, bottom lane. Looks like they did make a go on Gorak. They they use the lift. Zap as well. No, no kill though. Look at Yoki here. He's coming in from behind on this mid lane. And Razor sees him, gives him one little whip. Sends him on his way towards that bounty rune, which he will be able to snag up. And makes a long loop around to head himself right back towards his off lane position. So, a little bit of awkward engagement here and there. No one able to really follow through with anything quite yet. But it's so early to say. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty even game early on. The the puck slightly dominating the razor early. Oh, it's now evened out a bit. Is probably the main storyline here in terms of the off lanes, getting similar levels, or slightly more on the nature's profit. But Doom's a good comeback here, regardless. And he has been forced into the jungle, and this is freeing up the supports of HR a bit more now. They can start to roam around if they want, just go for some additional pulls or even push. Whereas Empire supports are kind of hanging around, not really getting too much accomplished. But I would say slight advantage to HR, but that can all change in a flash as Empire will go for the smoke. So heading towards the mid lane here, this is a good dynamic ganking duo. If they get the pick off here, it'd be good. But it's a puck. Puck has got to be. This is you a. Know, oh no! Sorry. <laughs> I'm like. Oh, look at this convenient timing as he tries to stagger forward quickly. Sees that potentially he could be in trouble. Actually connects with the stun. Only pretty long range. Telkinesis to follow on through. Now double rotations here. Here comes Dazzle. He does have Grave. Uses it. Nice timing right there. 
Raze is going to live and, well, always want to fly. Not going to be so lucky. And there is your first blood. It goes to Dread on the Vengeful Spirit. Hell Razors who strike first and get the first blood. That's how you play your Dazzle. Has the TP already ready to go. Great defensive support play. And it's just a tough kill at that point. He comes in, gets the Grave off at the last possible second. And with Hal damage, easily able to turn that one around. And the beautiful thing is Lycan never left the lane. The Prophet's still happily farming away bottom, so with that, HR start to pull quite far. Uh, Here gold, we'll see gold still slightly in Empire's favor, it looks like, but it goes basically back down to zero, and experience going their way. The main thing is going to be that because they have the Prophet, if they want to, they can TP him in top and start pushing extremely hard, and you look at Empire, they have not the best counter push. Mystic Snake's good, and they have the Puck Orb, but that requires them to rotate one of their two cores uh, from mid to bottom. The, the Rubik's only level two. He won't be able to do much to stop this push. But that's assuming HR want to go for one. Let's see. They do have Meanwhile, a catapult of, here. Yeah. Doom, of course, had forfeited the offlane to go work in the jungle for now. I say that, but he immediately TPs up top. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that TP. They see that and they're like, no, you don't. And now they're like, we can confidently move towards this tier one tower. and. Some early structures under our belts, and that allows Hellraisers to get a nice lump sum early in this game. Empire are not going to afford to do any sort of rotation to kind of help out, so there's a sacrifice you have to make. Bottom lane, he's caught with the telekinesis. He's trying his best to body block. Nice body block really by Aloha boxing. Dance. Oh, so oh. good. Not enough, though. Just a little too far for both Medusa and the Ogre to catch up. That was impressive. But. Unfortunately, no follow-up there. So they take the tier one top. I, they'd love to go for tier two, but I don't think they'll be able to just yet. I, next catapult Radiance with the profit, they may be able to do it. It's been dancing with death for so long, though. Quark has to play extra cautious here. And uh, I'm curious what kind of buildup he's going to go for in this Nature's this Prophet. The recent popular build of getting a couple of nulls allows him to get involved more globally and in some of these skirmishes where he can dish out some hefty right click, but for now just preserving and holding the branches in the boots. While others may be moving the jungle, get the old school kind of mice build at mid lane, though they're making a jump. It's going to force out another rotation from Dread. Now they step back, and also here comes Gorik and Aloha Dance will go down. Another counter initiation from Hellraiser's mid lane turns up a kill. These counter ganks, they've just been on point. Dazzle, goddamn now, in the right place at the right time, twice already, and this time is a bit more of a commitment, bringing in Gorik as well, but he still goes back bottom, and Duso's not really the best safe laner to punish a TP out. Yeah, she farms hard, but she's not the best pusher at this stage, and your tower's not in any danger. So Gorik able to support the other lane, still keep his levels up, and a big win overall again for HR. Lycan farming freely. 54 CS. Some of these are jungle creeps, but the majority are from the lane. So he's will have a very fast Vlads, and they can either use this to push tier 2 or even try and sneak a Roshan. With the Venge, it's not going to take long. You can already see Always Wanna Fly is, is prepping for that type of thing. Drops an Observer Ward down near the pit. Going to head back towards bottom. But the issue for Empire is they don't have a great scouting lineup. They only have the Puck Orb to get vision on the pit, and... Puck can't just sit near the pit throwing the orb out all day, so... Mm -hmm. Chances of HR grabbing this Roche are quite high. Just a matter of when, I would say. You can tell Empire usually used to getting off successful early gank rotations and pickoffs, but they've been coming up short and, in fact, handing over their own lives. And they try to make these kind of attempts, so it kind of wonder... You wonder how it affects their mind game here in the early well, parts of this. And you, and you also just see it in their levels. Level 3 on both supports, meanwhile both HR supports level 4. Yeah, they're sacrificing a lot. Look at them do a long turn around the corner here. Gorik, not again. This is the third attempt to try to get him. Will they finally do it and get themselves on the board? They will, and Stonegate is going to be popped. Steps away, walks right back in, but double TPs will allow those supports oh, to get on out of there. Silent, though, not going to be so lucky. And another TP rotation here. He, he got hey. turned into stone at, like, the last possible second there. Looked like the animation was even gone already. Now, hunting down the puck and force him to actually join to the high ground to walk away from this one. And 
I don't think that was worth it whatsoever. Empire dive behind the tower to simply get a little Furion, and they lose their Medusa in the end. So another exchange that doesn't work out for him. Furion makes his return back to the bottom lane, pops some trees out, and they're going to go for this Tier 1 tower. HR can just start pulling Empire apart a little bit. There are only heroes that very effectively punish the... Oh, they're wrapping around bottom. Without a Puck or Doom Blink, they're not that great at countering split push. Not particularly mobile. The initiation's not that easy. But this is one way to do it. If you just catch him out. Coil only kidding on Dread. And he's up in the front lines. Actually tanky through a lot of this. Then Graves at the last second. The great Graves again from Goddamn. Making the difference, they bring in Arch, they're gonna bring down two! Dakota, it's three! HR just running through Empire. And this is a Lycan Prophet. They are gonna snowball out Whoops. of control. Oh, that's that's a wah wah wah. <laughs> I guess it kind of blocks them briefly, but they still can't quite catch up here with Silent. Instead, they the put their sights on the Yoki. Those wolves trying to cut him off in the pass. And look at all that damage. One whip with the Telkinesis is gonna be there from Aloha Dance as he rotates here to the bottom. They both end up living and walk away. Still, it's Empire coming up short in another engagement here. Hellraiser is putting together a fantastic early period of this game. 6-2 to two now as they approach the 10-minute mark. Getting a lot out of it. Oh, they want to rush. Medallion's out. Flads is out. Maybe not the second. But very soon they can look towards the pit. And Empire now sitting with the, on, uh, the top two farmers on the, the Lycan... Razor. A lot of early game items. Picks up the drums. They, they've gone for the Vlads, the Medallion. No no greedy Midases, aside from Prophet, who will go back for one now, but even went phase first. Goddamn. Being chased out. Has a haste, though. He was actually really close to being brought down. He went for the rune, and they got him pretty dang low. He got himself the Shallow Grave. He would have been dead otherwise, but with that heal, and because it was the haste, he manages to just walk away. Very lucky for him it was a haste rune. See, Necro Book for Arts. They still have the thing is you can go Necro Book and still be very scary late game. So it just has such good synergy with their draft. And now they might start pushing down mid. Arts in front. The creeps will descend, and they leave the profit on one side of the map. And I expect we'll continue to see this from HR. At either profit or like in generally off on their own. The other three to four grouping up and constant pressure on multiple links. Tier one mid probably going down. Here. Yeah, no real defense for Empire. They continue to take tower after tower, but they know that's something they got to do. With the Medusa on the other team, this is a lady who just wants to get to that critical mass point where she could be a dominating force that you can't really do anything about. To prevent that, Hellraisers are going to continue to go objective for objective for objective and restrict that farm and take it away from the Medusa. And now, after taking down all three Tier 1 towers, great segue to move right into the Roche, and it doesn't take long whatsoever. Wow. Medallion is more than enough, and they just absolutely destroy it. Aegis now going to be picked up here for your Lycanthrope. The dominating streak early on this game seems to continue here for the Hellraisers. Can they keep that snowball rolling? Razor goes for the drums, as mentioned, so... We'll see if he goes back for uh, more of a carry item or something that just helps them push now. Could build a mech. He's definitely got the stats to support it with the bottle as well. Or he can just go into your AGs, BKB. Top tower it's, not, under attack. it's not the best BKB game. You've got Stone Gaze, Doom, the instant lift. But BKB will allow him just to face tank and get up in the, f the face of Empire. So we'll see what he wants to do. They're going to push bottom, though. HR. I think they're just going to go for tier twos, I think, next. So... They're looking to push here at the bottom, with the exception of Nature's Prophet, who heads back to Brace just briefly, still has the teleport at his disposal. Like it throw heads towards the mid, but the push continues here on the bottom. We'll see how much damage they can get on this tier 2 before they force enough of Empire to come back and maybe consider taking a fight. But they still don't have the blinks up. They had to go and stop off for that Midas first, of course, so it's going to be a little bit before they have that true initiation they're asking for. Same goes for Resolution. He's only got about 1k, so it's going to be a little bit before they have those Blink Daggers. Now Lycan comes back towards bottom lane. Necro number 1 can be sent out. Necro 1's pretty bad. And ends yeah. up, often ends up feeding a lot of gold Radiant just without really getting much done. Attack. But uh. it, If left unchecked, it gives you a lot of effective DPS against the towers. They're just a bit squishy. And they continue their push. Medusa trying to split push top, but 
Again, the issue with Medusa at this stage of the game is it does not kill buildings quickly. So therefore, not a threat at all in the split push department. And Empire just going to give up a tier 2 for basically for free. In fact, Silent may get caught out here. He hasn't seen Pete just yet, and now the Venge is in range. This could oh well could be the death of Silent. Swap available and not needed. Nature's Prophet will get to kill. Meanwhile, mid, half an inch charging in. We'll force them back. This is looking like pretty much the best case scenario for Hellraisers Very right now. Very methodical. And, you know, Dakota, again, going back to the draft, just the Ancient Apparition ban. Second phase, both games. Empire, Empire see that. They know that HR want to push them. And they're banning Drow, they're banning Chen. But they didn't ban the Big Bad Wolf. And I guess the thing is, there's always going to be something that can push. This is getting yep. scary, though. Yeah. And it just doesn't stop. Hellraisers get one tier two. They'll go to the next. They'll go to mid and see if they can get that one. If they do, they'll go to top. And it just surprises me that they're also able to get picks on the Medusa in the meantime because she needs to be farming during this time. She's going to be losing more and more space as far as being able to go out on her own and find that farm. This tier two is going to be dropped now. This is ridiculous. So much gold now coming the way for Hellraisers. This is just perfect execution of a game plan that they had built up from the draft from the start. For Empire here, uh-oh, Yoki could be in trouble. He pulls up Scorch Turf. He has to find a little nook to teleport out of. Is he going to make it? Yeah, he will. But no now, here we go. Top lane tier 2 next. No points in Poison Touch yet. Venge couldn't get in range, but if you can if you can make them come to you if you just keep on pushing. So No, no need to try and gank them out. Just barrel down the top lane. Tier 2 top will fall. It just... Wow. Duration. Oh, let's see. It's got a minute left. I don't think they break high ground with this Aegis, but I, if you're if you're HR, you want to ward up the enemy jungle. Get your Necro three. Get Prophet's first item, which is actually going to be a Necro book as well. So they're going double Necro. They've max Wave of Terror. Vengeance Hour should be next. And then with that next Aegis, that's where that's the latest I think that HR should be waiting to end the game. They're just going to be so strong by that point. But go beyond that, and, and they may start slipping with all these early to mid game items. Just 15 minutes, all outer tower is gone. It's ridiculous. Really, really good game plan coming out here from Hellraisers. And we'll see here as they kind of will step back. Before they break any sort of high ground, they would probably, like you said, look to go for another Aegis grab. So we'll see here. If you're Empire, what do you do? You look to. Maybe build up the farm and get those blink daggers underway. Can't really go for any sort of pickoffs because Hellraisers have, for the Dyer's most part, been hanging as a attack. unit, hanging as a group, and now they have so much more gold, so much more income because of those tower takedowns. They're at 6k net worth above. This early on into the game has allowed even just the supports to put together some good early game items and some good XP. HR take over the enemy jungle and. Looking to get the Necro books out. Roshan, oh, it's a long respawn for them. Five minutes. Wow. We'll see. Maybe, maybe the timing works out such that they get the Aegis, and it's like right when they get their next items after the Necro 3s. The thing that is tricky here for Empire is that they have this Medusa up here. They have the Bodyguard nearby just in case. But really, it's hard for everyone else to find their own bits of farm because they have to give what little room they have to the Medusa to work with. And they have to make sure they always have someone Dyer's nearby in case she gets caught out. But that could very well happen here. Dyer's they ping her out. And they have nearby Gorik at the ready. Pops out the ultimate. And they're ready to make their move. Step forward. Sprout. Go ahead and calls out the Stone Gaze. Getting greedy to go for the tower here. Could be forced to slither away from this one. But they're on the hunt. They call out the drums of battle, and they even think about TPing ahead to cut her off. Oh, the secondary sprout could be there, but she immediately eats that tree on the run. Urn flies out. This Razor already has here. plus 20, 126 before he steals any damage. Half a ninja looking scary. One more auto attack would secure this kill. Can he get in range? Get him with the wave of terror. <laughs> Swap wave of terror at that. Very nicely done. Uh, meanwhile, I like it. <laughs> This is not good. Art's caught out in the middle of nowhere. On the run. Orb comes through. The grave, though. Doom's going to wear off around the time that this grave does one more heal. No, it's not going to happen. So they do get him down. So the third kill for them. Now in resolution. Trying to get something. Orb's backing away. Very weak and wounded. And oh, there goes Aloha Dance. Killing spree right now for Gorik. And the slaughter continues here. Hellraisers. They end up trading two for two, but they take down Medusa again. Puts her at one and three. 
She's able to throw together the recipe for Lincoln's, it looks like, before she drops, but she's still got a couple more components to go. <laughs> yeah, you're not kidding with that. Gets the Lincoln's yeah. recipe, still needs everything else. So, it's yeah. a ways to go. HR do want to be careful, though. When you go for... They haven't gone all in push by any means, and they are leading experience, but... It's easy to lose one fight and then just find the game almost dead even, even when you thought you were pretty far ahead. 6,000 gold lead is maybe one, two bad fights at this stage, but... You get five man wiped, it's gonna swing entirely the other way. So I think they really want this next Aegis, and then, then you look to go. That's before Dusa gets too many items, she should have one. Uh-oh, they should have one. Aegis Prophet getting jumped right now. They move forward here, Doom showing off that new Blink Dagger, and Korok still alive here and pulling them back with his trees, and here comes a hasted Dazzle look to get on, and they're not going to be able to get that pick they wanted. Meanwhile, mid lane, oof, looked like they wanted to make a jump on the resolution, they're not going to get that one either, so... No real bloodshed going to be happening here, and all I got to say, they just probably does go for that Necro Book, so you put that Necro Book together with Lycan, and... Medusa's just going to have a real hard time. Even if she's able to throw together a couple of items, they're going to have plenty of ways to remove all that mana. There's a level 2 Necro Book now for Nature's Prophet. And you're liking about to get the level 3, so double Necros coming out. HR half the Dazzle heal, which will be nice to sustain the push with those books. But they're not ready to go just yet. I'm trying to it's think if there's anything else they really need before it. So uh, Aegis is the big thing. Yeah. It's just, I feel like for HR, it's just they're just going down the list of what they need to do. They made this draft like, okay, we just need to survive our laning phase, you know, be cautious, don't get caught out, then we'll go, once we get the proper items to lead things in, we'll get into Vlad's, and we'll go tower to tower to tower, get the Aegis, tier 2, tier 2, tier 2, then we'll step back, get a couple of Necros, wait for the next Aegis, and then go for the high ground. It just seems to work that way right for him. It's not the Bloodshed Royal Rumble we saw last game, it's HR throwing together a really nice lineup here and executing each game plan perfectly, at least for now. And they are about to get some other big items. The Razor Ags is also coming, so that's going to couple nicely with the Necro 3s. And Razor, as I was touching on earlier, goes late pretty well against this Empire draft. Maybe not the Medusa so much, but certainly the Doom he matches up as well as any carry can against. And... With the Ags, they'll be able to Siege very quickly. So I think that plus this new Aegis could be their timing. Ags complete. They have not I don't know if we mentioned the Urn on Goddamn, but they have that as well. Every tool in the arsenal you would want for a push. Uh-oh. Aloha Dance. Pretty deep here for removing. And that's a ballsy a TP. So they just swap him out of that, and it's going to be... Furion who's able to grab a, another kill, moving on to a dominating streak, just a free and easy pick as I guess they're just trying to create a little bit of space in this top lane while Medusa continues to farm elsewhere. Empire, on the other side, we haven't really talked much about where they're going with this. They, they we mentioned the Midas Doom, he's going to go towards the Ags. Crucial, I would say. Um, just to just to have the eggs refresher, so you can better shut down the lichen in team fights, and and also have an extra ultimate for most likely the dazzle, potentially one of the other carries. But you definitely will don't want that grave turning the fight around. We saw the potential for that earlier top lane. Yeah, other than that, puck went Dagon, which is an interesting choice this game. Generally, you get the Dagon when you think you can find these easy pickoffs, but. I'm just looking at HP pools, and a Dazzle is pretty squishy, so I guess the main goal with that Dagon just hopefully snipe, snipe the Dazzle before you can even get off a Grave, or, or force him to use it defensively. Well, Roche was up, now Roche is down. It's going to be an easy grab, they've been waiting a while for that one to come right back up, but it doesn't take long at all before they certainly get a hold of that extra life, and... Now, as they look to complete out the rest, as Necro 3 is already done here on the Lycan, Nature's Prophet's got his now. Just seems like they're going to have a really nice army to work with here when they try to siege for the high ground here. Ideally, if they can find a nice little pick here to start it off, that would be certainly helpful. But look at Empire here. I haven't really seen them go with this many into the Hellraiser's side, but it looks like they want to make something happen here in the top lane. Maybe a base race or a bit of a trade here. 
Because you see, Hellraiser is making a move on the bottom at the same time. The line is drawn. They're, they're even thinking about pushing through that bottom lane. Do they actually want to commit to the high ground yet? As you mentioned, Razor does evade just now. Of course, you don't reincarnate with Eye of the Storm like you used to, so it's not as potent as it once was. They pop oh. their Dazzle out. And we're yeah, going to go once it. more under the breach, HR. It's time, Dakota. Time to try and crack this Empire base. Oh, the Rebel Alliance it, moving right in. Medusa's not getting involved yet. She's still in mid lane here. We might need to consider getting back and certainly helping out, or maybe they have to sacrifice this one. Looks like they might. Resolution now going to get caught out with the whip here. Silent here. And now, after taking down the puck, it's going to force out the immediate buyback. Razor now focused fired here. Going to get stunned up. The shell grave is going to be right there, but as he walks back, the racks are already dead. Damage has been done. Stonegate is going to be popped, but they're already out the door. Doesn't matter. Hellraisers came, they got what they wanted, and they said, see you later. They left. That was too easy. They didn't have to risk anything there, really. Razor still is Aegis. AC nearly on the way. Uh, maybe just even go Shiva's, just for the slightly cheaper pickup that gives them a lot of utility in the team fights. I think you just go for your next lane of Rax. Maybe heal first if you need to, but <laughs> when it's that easy, why, why wait? Yeah, it just feels pretty flawless at this point. Always want to flag it, caught out in the mid lane. There's a swap to stop the TP and another grab for them. 13 to four now for Hellraisers and let's just keep going kids. Right down the mid lane and we'll go right up on high ground once more. Still have what, the Aegis and everything. Why not? And the, the item itemization from HR just shows that they're so confident in the strat. Every item pickup is designed just to make them as strong as possible over the next five to ten minutes. So now the buckler out from Goddamn, he can complete the mech. I, I doesn't really seem like much of a Crimson Guard game, but that will be helpful as they blink in. They will try to jump on Arc, but he already shape shifted, so he's able to continue dashing the damage out in HR. Push in for their second lane of Rax. Always want to fly, get shredded. More importantly, the range Rax is down, and this Razor out of control. 200 damage and auto attack brings it down. A full two lanes of racks eviscerated <laughs> as Empire just continue getting thwomped. HR is just, looking hot. Yeah, they're on fire right now. This is perfect execution of a game plan that they've had. They get another set of racks between both of those racks. They only lose one. They lose their Lycanthrope, but they didn't even have to expend their Aegis yet. So... Maybe go they top. just wait for Lyca to go back and go top and end it there. The Necro books and the Howl and the Minus armor, the additional armor that they're getting for themselves, plus the Agnum's Eye of the Storm at level 3 is just more than enough to shred apart any structure. Even, look at this, the Desolator being complete now in your Nature's Prophet. This is just out of control. And well, a desperate Medusa has to now put together, what was that? What is she grabbing right here? It's Maelstrom. the Maelstrom. All right, that helps a bit with the wave clear, but... Too little too late, I feel. The problem is now you've got to clear the Razor, because he's the one doing most of the damage to the towers, I think. Aloha Dance quickly swapped and silenced and just blown up. They end him, and now they will look for their final lane of Rax. Aegis, about 30 plus seconds to go. So this will be the wave to just take the Rax if you can, if you're in charge. They leap in. Silence standing high on the ground, just trying to hold them back. But Afeninja is not to be deterred thus easily. They'll even rotate Arcs through with his Necrobook arriving. It all dies quickly. He was doomed, but they forced Effin backwards. Afeninja trapped out by the coil, but it's a case of who's trapped whom, Dakota. They chase in, killing off the Doom, looking for more. Afeninja continuing to just lay into Empire. That's three lanes of Rax. That's going to be GG. And with that, HR are guaranteed a trip to China. HR and PR the least known sponsored organizations, I would say in CIS, or in terms of mm -hmm. just the strength of the brand name, there's no Empire, no VP or VP poll are guaranteed to go. It's your Hellraisers, the former Compass Gaming boys, they've come a long way, and they're, they're, they're China bound to possibly even straight into the main event, depending on how these next few days go. Wow. Hellraisers, man. I know I came in this one sounding like an Empire fanboy, but Hellraisers, a very impressive play yesterday. They looked, like, tremendously talented with those big comeback plays, taking down Virtus Pro 2-0. And now here, after Empire looked like they had a dominating start, 
They make a big comeback play, even things up, go to a game number three, and this was just so perfectly executed, I felt. It was just one and done. It felt almost too easy peasy for them, and now they secure their spot. They go to try and congratulations to them, Empire. They're not eliminated. They get a chance to fight back, but like you said, man, very surprising. We were asking about seeing some fresh faces and maybe some of these huge, huge events, and well, we we're going to get what we asked for. I'm excited. Good stuff. Excellent. It's been an exhausting but awesome day, guys. If you missed any of the games, they're all available at youtube.com slash beyondthesummittv. Thank you to everybody who joined us. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. If you did, be sure to let us know. You can tweet at CoddleGuy. Follow him as well. He's been slaving all night for you. And, of course, uh, if you'd like, follow me as well at LDDota. If you have any feedback, uh, we're always happy to take it under advisement. But with that said, that will conclude our part of the show. The day is not done yet, though. Coming up next... Zayori and Merlini will be taking you through a couple additional games here. We've got two more best of threes headed your way, so don't go anywhere. But as for us, we're going to get some sleep, get some rest, and uh, come back refreshed tomorrow for more awesome Dota 2 action. Thank you once again for watching the Dota 2 Asia Championships. European qualifier action continues in a bit.